uh, graduation in painting and then animation seemed to me a way to enter into a world of the moving image. Studying animation uh, made me very interested in sequential images, for example. So the idea of taking an image and repeating it multiple times and then that forms a certain narrative and, you know, it creates motion as well. As far as this work goes, I had um, this bunch of photographs that I found, which are lying around in somebody's cupboard or the other, which kind of are without provenance of a sort. Like nobody knew who they were, where they're taken. They're kind of like these rootless photographs which mm -hmm. are lying there, which I found fascinating. To explore a kind of timelessness within this kind of closed idea of the photograph, because they are. What I then took is that it displaced the context because we didn't know what the original context was. You weave that together in a narrative and put two or three very disparate images together in a sequence. They tell a story which you have just made up, which you have constructed and you're in a sense then creating a fictional universe. It's palimpsest of mm. kind of erasing and then rewriting and then putting it together like by doing that i believe at least that we're also creating meaning all these things lost and found again and then looked at in in terms of a of family archive or not even family like a historical archive a, a document of things which exists and which now we have taken into context and altered so whether it's the boxes and assemblages which become individual physical containers of like a box of memories almost uh, but they're not really memory because they are new um, notes that we have created with this we going to avoid using narrative because it is not as you say you know, we're not making a story necessarily but we are creating a narrative thread time there plays a very um, important role because when I'm sequencing images, they are unfolding in time, right? Say for example, I'm interrupting that time by creating a kind of imagery which doesn't lend itself to a straightforward time. Or I create loops which keep coming back. So it is in a way very important to my work because I'm constantly taking the still and the moving and contrasting it and throwing against each other, inverting it. Um, filling in blanks, creating more blanks, like constantly in opposition and in conjunction with each other. So, I mean, I'm creating like a fabulist landscape of sorts, which uh, are impossible landscapes actually, because I'm what I'm doing is creating landscapes out of a montage of scenes and terrains which have no connection to each other, but at some point making them one. Yeah, these geographies are important. They kind of create the, the abstraction that I'm looking for in the work. I, I found so many, you know, what would be called selfies today, but mm -hmm. pictures of my grandfather and friends posing in a certain kind of way. There were some uh, nude photographs I uncovered, which, of, of course, of men. And I think it was more about making art than about sexuality mm. you know they were trying to explore their kind of creative mm. sides or whatever but we can only imagine i come from a very conservative background so when i went to california and i went to new york um i saw something completely different from from my childhood i see i had not experienced that level of openness mm. I think we just I was trying to absorb all of it. And so I felt like I wanted to kind of document that also for myself. And I was really, you know, I was gra I gravitated towards it. I started photography in like the late 80s, but it wasn't actually like very anything serious. It was more about just me documenting my time and my space. When, when I first had a dark room, I would just start experiment with portraiture. And um, because I had all these friends around me, I just thought we'd kind of I'd play around do various other portraits, and then I got this dark room. So I really wanted to learn how to print, uh, because I knew color would be much more expensive to print. But um, as I progressed from that, um, as I started doing more documentary work, I started printing that. And I started, I started creating a portfolio. Because I just thought if I make a portfolio, I can actually take it out of a magazine and try to get work, get assignments.
I miss it self-taught and never went to school for photography. So I just learned from looking at other people's work and looking at magazines. So for me, if I talk to a photographer and somebody, someone said, look, I think you've got to focus on this, or you have to kind of go closer, go back. And I kind of took those ideas and I, that's why I have like maybe eight, 10 frames. One person who just won't experiment with, with space, with getting close. So I think it came from that. When I was shooting film, I mean, that was all that was there. So the, the idea didn't arise about how one shot. It was only about economics. But the film was much more exciting because I had to, I'd be keen to go back and process the film and see what I had. Like every photographer I made was, you know, shooting film, going back to a dark room, processing the film, printing. And that was really exciting. I think that's changed now. You know, that sort of waiting period, that moment, that excitement is gone. I mean, Nan Golden's work I saw actually probably when I started doing more serious photography. I think I mentioned Mark Morris wrote. Yeah. And I really got to his kind of work because it was also very personal. It was very, he was taking photos of his friends in very intimate spaces. And I just intimate pictures of his friend. Things felt really raw, things felt gritty. And so there's a huge music scene, there's a huge art scene in the East Village where I was living. And so all these friends I was around, they're all artists, they were designers. I think that's what I'm trying to do with this edit also, is as much as I'm trying to create some sort of narrative, but also keep it non-linear. I really try to work with colors and shapes. And hopefully like one image will connect to the next. Even, with, even if there's a connection in my head about um, those relationships that these people had or didn't have, in my head if they did, I just try to connect that in the way that I lay out the pictures. Because for myself, as I edit, I'm trying to remember sort of this, this thread of memories. As much as I'd like it to be like non-narrative or non-linear, it's just nice for somebody to make a connection and see like a progression of time. Photographing the protest because I thought I'd more be a press photographer. And the only one publication that I really thought was like a, a weekly was The Village Voice. And I knew people who worked there, so I thought, hey, I could actually you know, work for the village boys as a street photographer. Mm -hmm. And so I started just documenting the protests in New York. Mm -hmm. But I, it didn't really, I mean, I just wanted to kind of see what was happening. So I just got every protest that was there. Mm -hmm. It was either like anti-KKK um, rallies, mm -hmm. or there was, um, you know, there was a rally for Matthew Shepard who had died. I worked in a photo agency for a while. And I think when I was there is when I started seeing various guys of work. And also meeting other photographers. And so then, as that, during that time, I started thinking about projects in India because that was very familiar for me. Most of us, when we started off, we were just using black and white film. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that was the easiest thing available. You could probably, mm -hmm. like when I was in NID, I could happily go to the dark room there and I could kind of, you know, develop it, make my own print. I shot a lot of these um, kind of backstage photographs of, uh, of circuses in India, Indian mm -hmm. circuses, and especially looking at women performers. I mean, it was not so much of the performance on the stage, but mm -hmm. like the life of uh, people behind the curtains. I had these incidences of these uh, girls coming up and having their own idea of how they wanted themselves to be shot. They obviously had some idea of a self-image and I got very much interested in this idea of self-image with them. And so I finally ended up using drawings as a way out and actually these girls did these beautiful drawings because they were in the circus and I gave them these some sketch pens or something and we, we would interact and we talked a lot and a lot of their imagination of themselves is with this Bollywood Mm. heroines or whatever they could catch. I always wonder about the participation of the subject into the work and so mm -hmm. one of the first works actually after I left Belga mm -hmm. and all that was an exhibition which was curated by Gauri Gill mm -hmm. which was called, called Trans Portraits and I looked at women from the northeast living in uh, Delhi. A lot of my work is based on conversations. I think that comes from my journalism mm -hmm. and looking at people and the practices around mm -hmm. how do you tell a story. I mean, I think that comes somewhere from mm -hmm. there. There used to be earlier drawing journals. Mm -hmm. Then there is, there's been, there are some which are drawing and photo journals and mm -hmm. they've gone into pure photo journals. So it's just like me 
uh, putting some kind of my own ideas into some kind of a form. Mm. For that, what I'm experiencing, I'm just clocking it. I might try a visual poem. Mm. I might do a kind of a very personal travel or, mm. you know. So it's also you are form, you are kind of experimenting even in the book format. Mm. It was very interesting to go through the archive of Mr. Mahajan mm. because it it was also images of people had themselves shot, mm. but it had a lot of this element of imagining yourself a certain way. Mm. So a kind of an aspirational kind mm. of an image of yourself. It's mm -hmm. a very very nice camera. Mm. It's like having a dark room, a Xerox machine, and a camera in a way. So like there's a Snapchat picture, but it's actually based on uh, a Victorian way of, you know, doing mm -hmm. photo montage, mm -hmm. you know, so those points were picked up. It's not that some subject is some far away thing sitting there. Mm -hmm. I like that fact of the subject being my equal. Mm -hmm. Then I am having a conversation with the subject. I do a certain kind of research, mm -hmm. okay. And research could be through either reading, uh, looking at other visual material, looking at material around it. A lot of it is also based on actual meeting of people. You know, mm. I really love doing that. I am definitely interested in looking mm. at the medium itself. The time spent with the photography archive has made me consider how knowledge enables us to think of other realities, not just one reality, or postulate beyond the claim of any one voice. The world of media has enabled the viewer as an active participant, and so we think about seeing and being seen as an entry point into the enigma of an image. A conversation with the artists Sukanya Ghosh, Srinivas Kuruganti, Uzma Mohsen, and Edson Diaz was about negotiating proximities, a meditation about distances and nearnesses that the field of photography had generated within all of us, a field that is democratized, seen by us, used by us, and available to us all. The surface of things as it emerged before us manifest the artist's entrenchment in their practices, art and documentary always melding into the other, absorbing the other, invoking each other. It has been as much about recording, reception and transmission as about appreciating the image's affect and trace, preserved on any surface, any screen, printed in a book or solely implanted in one's mind. So the uncharted vocabulary of what the images present to us, the grammar of it today, 
is allied to the domain of personal histories and their social lives. They are composers of new experiences, coalesced by reliving an ever-changing present, memories raw data or scaffolding for the future, virtually how we make the present through the act of production.